Yeah, hold on. I didn't. I, I didn't even actually. I didn't even put the mics on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we haven't recorded with nobody else. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Yes, yes, everybody, and welcome <laughs> to High on Homegrown, the cannabis podcast from Percy'sGrowroom.com. I am Mackie from the UK, and joining us this week we have Monkey Do. Hi, it's still Monkey, still here from the Southeast US. Hope everybody's doing as good as me today and has something nice to smoke. We also have the host of Bite Me, the show about edibles, Marge. <laughs> That's right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for that, Mackie. That was much smooth. Second time. <laughs> we got that much smoother. First time. It's just smooth. <laughs> Winged it. Look at that. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Marge. Sorry. But that's okay. You're forgiven. That was a, a nice professional intro, if I do say so myself. Which one? The first one or the second yeah. one? Well, you, there was yeah. no first one. You want, I don't know what you want about. It's just a technical glitch. With the audio there. Uh, it's such a shame that people won't get to hear that. that. That was funny. That was funny. Yeah, but we're back, everybody. We're here for the Grow Guides. So we're going to be talking about companion planting for cannabis plants. Uh, and companion planting is something, uh, well, we'll get to it when we get to the Grow Guides. But let's smoke first. Let's do that. That's what we'll do. We'll get a little bit higher. It's for medicinal uses because I'm not well, isn't it? It's good. Because I've got that, that flu, that cold, whatever that is. I need to hit some of this medicine here. Good little anxiety. I need a little something to get the anxiety That's away. That's right. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Get that anxiety off from there. What's up, Hook? Hook's in the chat. What's up, Hook? It's good to see you, bro. It's early morning for Hook. Oof. Yeah, what's everybody smoking on in the chat? Let us know. We didn't ask in the news what you're all smoking on. So let us know what you're smoking in the chat there, everybody. Tell us it's some good shit. Yeah, all those make good companion plants. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> Chilbert. That's a good one. That's definitely top of the list. Like the flowers. Yeah, so it's like, what did we talk about at the start of Grow Guys? You know, before we do the news, we just launched the stream. You know, we got a quick catch up and do all that kind of stuff. But at the start of Grow Guys, it's just like, what did we even talk about today? I don't know. Great yeah. question. Uh, yeah. Maybe we just what get we right Yeah, maybe just get straight in on the grow guys. Hey. That might be the best idea. Yeah, should should we do it? Are you ready? Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it then. <laughs> So for today's grow guides, we're going to be talking about companion planting. And this is when you plant other plants with your cannabis plants for some kind of purpose for bug resistance to add nutrients into the medium. And yeah, some plants do do that. It's crazy. But uh, yeah, pretty much it's just planting other types of plants next to your cannabis plants for some particular reason. And we're going to explain what those reasons are throughout the grow guides and what kind of plants you can use for different purposes. And in what different setups you can do it with as well so let's get stuck in on that straight away now i would say this companion planting thing it's mainly for soil growers right would you all say that i would have to say yes yeah you're just That's gonna so. uh, mainly like in a raised bed i would think that would that would you know the people will have a raised bed in their grow room and they'll plant the cannabis plants in it uh twisted had a really good diary that had loads of companion plants with it before which you should definitely check out that diary over on Percy's. Do you remember that diary monkey? Do you remember seeing that? Yeah, I think that's that was in his uh living soil bed that he, that he set mm -hmm. up. Yeah, but he had, he uh he documented very well how he built built the bed and, and how he originally planted into it and re, what the reasons were for planting in it. But yeah, I do remember that diary very good. Uh, good I think diary, that man. that that bed's still running. I think I'm not positive about it. I haven't seen it lately, but I think it's still running. Yeah. So I mean. I'm, you could probably use this stuff in a hydro setup, but they'd have to be in a different pot. You, know, you couldn't grow it in cocoa, for example. Say if you were growing any kind of a plant, well, I suppose you could grow it in cocoa, but that's uh, it's just going to be more work than necessary. So, where do we go from here? It's like, uh, because we well, discussed we have... what companion planting is, but what are companion plants? That's what we should well... go into. It would go real easy, maybe, if we'd explain, you know, the reason we you're going to do companion plants, there, there's a couple of, of benefits that other plants can have in your cannabis plant. One would be if you're going to use companion plants in a living soil bed, the plants can actually 
uh, increase uh, or, or uh, what's the word I want to use, fortify your soil in, in certain ways, uh, like legumes can add nitrogen to your soil and things such as this. Different herbs can actually uh, repel in, uh, bugs and insects in the soil, things such as this. And that's the reason that it doesn't work well in cocoa because, or other hydroponic systems, because, well, you don't want to put uh, other things in your hydroponic media. So you don't want plants trying to add things to your hydro media. So that's why we don't use companion plants in hydro so much. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that that's the, the, the quickest basis I could go on it like that. So because of this, I'm not, I don't grow companion plants because I am primarily a cocoa grower. So yeah. this doesn't make sense for me to put companion plants in my cocoa because the companion plants are going to be eating nutrients and taking up space. And this is, you know, mm -hmm. hydro, hydro, you're basically doing everything for the plant. So you're going to want to use the companion plants to do things for your cannabis plant. That's right. Yeah. You, you don't want to, uh, like when you're planting a plant into the soil, you want it to give shit back as well as take nutrients. How you normally so when you're growing in a raised bed, you'll plant a certain type of plants. And it will absorb the nutrients from the soil, but only a little bit. You don't want anything that feeds too much because that needs to go to your cannabis plants. So you get a light feeding plant that can bring something back. And you said like legumes and shit can put nitrogen back into the soil. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's but yeah. peas and beans and the things like that. You know, Clover. those kind of things like yeah, clover is yeah. another one that can fix nitrogen yeah. back into the soil like that. But yeah, it's just uh, it's part of the plant, part of what happens. There are several types of plants out there that can do it. So that would definitely help increase the fertility of a raised bed over uh -huh. time. It's just having room for the fucking things, isn't it? Because, you know, if you're growing indoors in a four by four, like uh, the majority of growers seem to do, that seems to be the most popular way of doing it. Then you put four plants in there and you run out of space. Because I've thought a few times I should put my cacti in with my plants, but towards the end of flower, there's no space left for the plants that are in there, never mind anything else. You know, so right. this is so uh, taking yeah. up space with companion plants instead of your weed plants. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's just got to do with your grow style, though. Uh, a lot of growers just they they do that because that's just the way that they feel comfortable in growing, and they, they get the best results by using companion plants. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's your grow style, there's a lot of things that the companion plants can do for you. I mean, some companion plants produce nothing more than really like maybe a bulk around around your plant. Uh, I saw someone at Percy's recently used what looked like rye grass or some kind of a grass as a companion planting because he planned on letting the grass die and becoming a living mulch around his around the tops of his pots. Nice. That's, a, that's you know, those are the kind of uh, interesting ways to use companion plants. Uh, there are certain types of predator mites that if they don't have any predators, they can die out. Or you can plant a small pepper plant in, in your in your uh grow tent because these mites can also eat pollen from the pepper plants so if there's no no yeah. predators no thing in there that needs needs eating the mites can go up there and live on your pepper plant till they find insects that can go back and munch on so little things like that you don't have to always use companion plants for the same thing mm -hmm. but they can they can accomplish various things in your tent yep yeah. uh and that's it. We're gonna when we come to because there's two different ways you're gonna use these companion plants, or maybe even more. But there's at least two, and that's uh to fix soil, like to add uh, more drainage, to fix the nitrogen in soil, these kind of things, or to repel bugs, or or attract bugs to that plant rather than your cannabis plants. Yes. So you're gonna look for the smellier ones, aren't you? the ones that uh, insects can smell from a while away. It's hard to find a plant that's smellier than cannabis. But some flowers are, are quite pungent. Uh, so we're looking at marigolds, marigolds are one of those that uh, can be power pests, right? Yeah, uh, marigolds, uh, root pest is one thing that I've been told with marigolds. I've, I've been mm. growing marigolds outdoor for years. It's just a very simple, easy plant to grow, especially if you get the dwarf varieties. Mm. And yeah, the, uh, it's said that the marigolds can repel pests. But in my experience, they also attract pests in yeah. a way that they'll, they'll attract them to the marigolds. I've had like insects go and eat the heck out of my marigolds and leave my good plants alone. Yeah. So, it, you know, they could also takes. get there and be like, hold on for a second. Is that weed over there? <laughs> and then they just fucking <laughs> they go over to the weed plant and be like, what the fuck? They might, but marigolds are a good companion plant. And I also like them because, well, they're flowers. I just have a soft heart for, for uh -huh. blossoms uh -huh. of any kind. So, yeah. Right. Mm hmm. 
are most people using companion plants though like with an outdoor grow because yeah mean, that's where it'll be used the most tent, but yeah. yeah sometimes yeah frequently they'll use them like another, another plant to uh to use for or in an outdoor grow to get pests away from your cannabis would be sunflowers because mm. there's several pests that could could eat your uh, cannabis plants and would would love to eat your cannabis plants but they like sunflowers better so if you plant yeah. your sunflowers in proximity but not right next to your cannabis plants they'll go over there and they'll eat the heck out of your sunflowers they'll just destroy mm -hmm. them and your cannabis plants will be fine it's like uh swami when we had swami on the show last time was it last time yeah. or the time before that he explained how mm -hmm. one of the ways he prevents bugs getting into his grow field you know it's not just a grow room he's got a field mm -hmm. of, of ganja and uh he plants sunflowers around the outside of the whole field like the whole fence has sunflowers on it and that and then any bugs coming in from other fields around his field would go to the sunflowers first and it would mm -hmm. just you know it's a good, just good way of uh doing the whole ipm thing integrated pest management trying to keep the huh. bugs away rather than treating them when they arrive right right yeah prevention rather than yeah prevention. exactly prevention sure. prevention rather than cure just prevent it yeah. in the first place that's the best way right so yes yeah. marigold sunflowers basil basil is another one i've heard no. that one is a good one a lot of people do use it basil in the uk basil in, in the u.s take your pick right. you know yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh we and lavender as well some people don't like the smell of lavender though you know some people just don't like that plant it's strange Oh, I, I like, like lavender. lavender. As a matter of fact, I actually mm -hmm. love the linalool in cannabis. That doesn't offend me at all. If I find a strain with good linalool content, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they'll keep pests like uh, aphids, mosquitoes, and spider mites away, apparently, if you mm -hmm. use uh, them kind of plants in the grow room. So, and if, if you're growing in a hydro, then you can use these plants in your grow room if you have room for it. Just, uh, you know, put it in their own pots. And Quarantine them first. Don't just go out and buy a plant from the shop and stick it in your grow room because it's probably going to have some kind of bugs on it or something. And you don't want to contaminate your plants by bringing bugs all. into the room I, like right, that. That's so the purpose of a companion plant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I grow everything by seed. That way I avoid those pest problems, you know? Yeah, yeah. Good plan. No, yeah. Most herbs uh, are easy <laughs> enough to grow from seed. If you can grow cannabis from seed, you can grow these herbs from seed too. Uh -huh. Right. For sure, man. That makes sense. So growing them from seed instead of the cuttings from the store. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you're growing cannabis uh, organically, like full organic, and you're not using the bottled nutrients and things like that, then you're always looking for different ways to bring nutrients back into your soil, you know, improve the fertility of the soil so the plants are happier in there. So you want to try finding plants that can take the nitrogen out of the air because like 70% like of the air is nitrogen or something, right? It's a crazy amount. Yep. So yeah, and it can. There's some plants that will take nitrogen out of the air and put it back into the soil and make little uh, nitrogen nodes in their roots and shit. It's a cool cycle. But uh, you can like beans. You said beans do it, monkey. If you grow some yeah. beans, that will absorb the nitrogen. Yeah, types of legumes will do it. Yeah, that's any right. type of beans will usually get you there. Lentils, beans, uh, even peanuts. But I mean, that's a little harder to deal with. But yeah, all of that stuff are great nitrogen fixers. Yeah. And easy and, to grow as clover well. as well. Cl clover yeah. as well. I and mean, you can get the clover seeds and just sprinkle it across the top of the soil and loads of little ones will pop up. And that yeah. will uh, increase the nitrogen content. Yeah, but you've even got some red clovers in there if you want something to look at, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, man. So, is there any other plants you can think of uh, that can do that kind of thing? Is it just nitrogen that will be absorbed and put back in? Is there any plants that does any other nutrients you know of? You know... I've only ever used the nitrogen fixers. Uh, I've, I've been growing out, outdoors and organic stuff for quite a long time. And I've only ever tried to increase the soil that way with the, those. They're probably out there, but I'm not aware of them. So I'm not going to pretend that I know that information. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'll be honest with people. I'm not aware yeah, yeah. of that. That's it. We're not experts, man. We're just uh, having a discussion about these things of what we know. But there's um, there's ways to keep disease away from the plant as well like uh offering a sacrificial lamb of some other kind of plant <laughs> to keep disease away from them, like, like rot and fungus and things like that uh, chrysanthemums and garlic allegedly are uh, good to plant alongside them to reduce them kind of thing so you know you can and garlic's got high scent as well so that helps cover the smell of cannabis see if you're growing outdoors and shit you want to be looking for that kind of thing as well like using the lavender 
to try and cover the smell of the cannabis if you're grown in a legal place, of course. Mm -hmm. But everybody does that now, so it's not so important. As you would say, basil is actually an excellent thing to cover up smells with because right. every time anything brushes against that plant, mm -hmm. it's going to release a lot of smell. Nice. Mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, you can plant all these plants around there. You can plant some bees, mm -hmm. some clovers, some lavender, and get Rosemary. some garlic in there. Yeah, all sorts of things that can just be... If you're growing in living soil, then and it's a repeating system. You know, just let the plants die off and they'll go back into the soil and be you know the circle of life and all that mm -hmm. <laughs> just without the lions you, know? <laughs> uh, you can do so much stuff with those other plants too like if you're growing fresh garlic or basil i mean mm -hmm. I, I i can taste a pesto coming on and like oh <laughs> man know. yeah yeah. Everyone's talking about making sandwiches and stuff in the chat, and I'm really hungry now. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to send you some basil seeds, March. I, I yeah. harvested some this year, so yeah, it, and it's a great nice. one. It's purple. Yeah, and you can. Which is the one? I think. Uh, I'm not sure. Which, there's one which grows really fast that you can just cut it, and then it'll just grow again over the next few days. I'm, that's got to be basil, isn't it? It's got to be basil. Uh, it, 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 the, in my environment, in my temperature, yes, I can cut it. Uh, I can go ahead and harvest enough to make a, a nice thing of pesto off of a, maybe a couple plants. But if you har basically what I do on mine is I fem the ends. I just take the tips off the leaves every time. I don't actually cut the tip, but just fem it all. And then they grows back in two days. I could do it again and again and again and again. Yeah. it's a beautiful way to harvest it just keep yeah. them in the tips yeah so you know if you have the space for it why not add these things man yeah you know, i mean think about it open up your tent and you, it's time to cook dinner or you go in and get your own oregano and, and basil mm -hmm. and you name it every tarragon dill anything you want you could easily grow it in your grow tent with your cannabis that's right man and you might as well if you have the space in it it's just the space is the big factor you know, if you want to fill space with anything, you want to fill it with cannabis. You know, <laughs> but if, <laughs> me, yeah. But if you have space, you know, and you've got enough cannabis growing in there, you want to think about ways to deter pests or to fix soils or to prevent disease. Then using uh, companion plants is a good way to do these things. You know, you don't need to use chemical foods or uh, chemical pesticides if you're doing a full organic grow. Just doing mm -hmm. these kind of things to just. Uh, it keeps balance, you know, and diversity in the garden, which is always a good thing. Yeah. So can any of these plants attract bad insects, though? Can they, uh, you know, are, are they going to attract spider mites into the grow room and then the, they'll just move on from them onto your own cannabis plants? They Still can, happens. depending upon the plants. Uh, I, I do remember uh, Queen of the Sun, uh, uh, Alexia. Alexa? Yeah, Alexandra Stans Irons. Yeah. Alexandra, yes, Irons. Yeah, it's basically saying that uh, she did not like to use, I believe it was rosemary. She said it attracted way too many aphids for her. Or was it hmm. mites? One of the, it was either aphids or mites from rosemary. Uh, but again, she, she examines these plants with the microscope and evidence is what she was saying. Even though it's high in, extremely high in pinene, it's still, she said that she wouldn't put that in her cannabis grow. So, yeah. The answer so would be yes. I just don't know them all. I don't know which ones I wouldn't put in there. Um, Chilbert mentioned as well, alloy or aloe. I don't aloe know. is a good one. Yeah, yeah aloe. Because you can plant that with cannabis plants, and that's going to help you with uh, cuttings as well. When you're trying to make some clones, you can use that to improve the rooting gel, off, right? Yeah, yeah, it makes like rooting gel out of it. Very easy to use. Have you seen? Have you seen that? Random tangent, everybody. You just skip 30 seconds if you don't want to listen to random tangent. But if, <laughs> have you uh, seen that guy? He does these Instagram reels where he just makes these ridiculous inventions. And then at the end, he's like, very easy to use. It's like uh, he makes a toilet for three people. You know, and there's, uh, <laughs> there's, you sit on the bottom and then somebody sits above you and then somebody above them on like a slope. So when they poop it or, or piss, you know, it just slides down this slide into the toilet yeah. at the bottom. And yeah. the guy's, <laughs> the guy's like, very easy to use. It's like, <laughs> even if it is easy to use, I don't want to fucking use that. 
You got to get on a ladder and climb up to the top stool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. You know why there's already two people shitting in front of you. Like, God damn. Oh, and the guy in the bottom gets to hear all of the stuff sliding down. Past yeah. Oh. Oh. Very easy to use. I'm sure if you type into YouTube, very easy to use. You'll find loads of the videos. It's yeah. just funny, man. It's funny. Cracks me up. So uh, what else are we saying? What else can we grow along cannabis plants? This is going to be a pretty short grow guide. Sorry, here we've discussed <laughs> everything we need to discuss, really. Uh, the sunflowers are a good one, which was mentioned earlier. And apparently, you can use that for support as well. Because, you know, sunflowers grow these long ass stems. And I suppose I guess if you it's close to the plant, you tie it up. Yeah, if it's a big mm -hmm. enough plant, you know? Yeah. Someone asked in the chat if microgreens would work. If what would be a, a decent. Yeah, yeah, well, basically, I mean, you, you're germinating seeds, Mackie, and just cutting the tops off the seeds after the cotton right. leaves come out. That's microgreens. All oh, right, okay. Um, I mean, would be a good, like a living mulch, maybe. So, I mean, I would try it. Certainly wouldn't do any harm. Right. Yeah, you can try these things, don't you? Uh, marigolds on tomatoes. Children says children knows a lot about this kind of stuff. Decoy plants, detector plants sacrificial for the cause chill says the yeah the few Sparky different was, types yeah. he put down in mint and i was going to say yes mint is one of the herbs that you can plant in you in your grow that actually will de uh deter some pests some pests don't like mint mm -hmm. yeah there's mints a really strong one isn't it it is another one of those strong ones but yeah you'd find that most people would do this kind of thing outdoors as well this is it for more like for an outdoor garden where there's pests all over the place uh, you know you don't want them getting into their you just want to try and keep it organic. I don't know. It's not something that I do. I've never considered growing. Uh, well, I, I did during that one time when I was growing organic. So I thought about getting some clover seeds, but then I couldn't find any. I was looking in the shop and the one, <laughs> so, so I didn't carry carry on with that. That's just the way it goes. Yeah, twisted says mint will take over your cannabis pot. So maybe plant that in a separate pot in the room. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, Twisted had that. Um, should, was he growing a fucking pumpkin in there too? I can't remember. If he uh, I don't think he was doing a pumpkin in there. I could be wrong. I didn't see a pumpkin in it though. Uh, Maybe yeah. a squash, but not a pumpkin. It was a cool diary though. It was cool to see all of those different plants in a raised bed like that. You know, little bits of cannabis here and there. And it, it, it had loads of different stuff. It was nice and colorful. You know, it just looked natural. And that, that's what you uh, want to be aiming for sometimes, you know. If you're an organic grower, especially, you want to be aiming for a natural environment for the plants as much as possible. And, you know, using these companion plants is a great way to do that. Yeah. I would think, anyway. <laughs> yep, I would do that. Yep. <laughs> See, uh, basil, uh, Chilmet says here. Basil? Uh, oh, no, he's English. Yeah, he's going to say basil. <laughs> English. Says it attracts uh, aphids and whitefly, I think he said. Oh. Yeah, so you got to find something that's like battles against them. Jesus. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, one's good, one's bad. You know? This is why it's just easy to grow in cocoa, everybody. Just saying. <laughs> 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 now I'm back in cocoa. You know? Cocoa's the shit. I did miss growing in cocoa. But what else like can you grow cocoa. alongside? I mean, along with companion plants, there's just cool plants to grow as well you know that's nothing to do with cannabis just if you want to exp expand your growing hobby after a while you know you've grown cannabis plants and you're like oh this is really fucking easy i'm going to try yeah. other stuff well you i know? mean you talked earlier about companion planting an auto flower so i mean that's yeah, actually a, yeah. in a in a tent full of photos that has an empty space that's a great companion plant uh-huh for sure man it's a good way to use up space you, you know when you've got most of your spaces because some grows are bigger than others you know it's yep. like sometimes you'll fill out a tent and you've done nothing different and other times there'll be just little bits of space you know things are flowering it's coming to an end you so say you got like three weeks left the plants ain't gonna get any bigger but the buds will so if you have space there with a few weeks left you know two three weeks left two weeks two weeks two weeks <laughs> then why not just put a little table in there or something and just pop a few fucking beans and just let them sit on the side you know, they can be companions, but at the end of the day, it's saving a couple of weeks of the whole grow period if you can overlap couple of weeks. like that. Couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Mackie sounds like he's coming down with something. Hopefully I'm getting over it, mate. Fuck. 
Yeah, you should have yeah. heard him before the show. Before he you know, got that courage up and got got it going yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Before that adrenaline kicked in, you know. Adrenaline, <laughs> adrenaline. <laughs> Starting to sound a little bit nasal there. Adrenaline. Yeah, I'm getting a bit nasally here. I, I need is, to have another lem sip. Another uh, strepsil. Gosh. Yeah, it should be though. But it's this time of year, man. It's another reason why fucking winter's crap, isn't it? Yeah, if you shut spoiled. all the windows and close all the doors and then we hide inside and then we're just breathing each other's air and the next thing you know, you're sick. It sucks. Yeah, yeah. Goddamn kids in their schools. <laughs> kids anyway. in them schools and all yeah, that learning. Goddamn kids and all that learning. <laughs> we're back in my day. They home and didn't get nobody sick. Yeah, we did that <laughs> learning outside. <laughs> yeah. Goddamn. But yeah, just got a bit of a cold. No, nothing major. I'm just getting over it now. But yeah, T thanks for uh, thanks for pointing it out, Phil. You know, you know, this is just <laughs> this etiquette rule that, that that's out there. Like if somebody can, uh, I'm, not, I'm not fucking just, I'm not breaking your balls, Phil. I'm just saying because it popped to mind. You know, if if you notice something about somebody and they can't fix it in thirty seconds, don't bring it up. You know, it's like if somebody got something in their teeth, be like, yo, bro, you got something in your teeth because they can fix that in thirty seconds. You know, but if it's like, oh, bro, you got shit stain on your fucking, <laughs> on your trouser leg there, and you just don't bring it up because they can't fix it. <laughs> I don't yeah, know, man. If, 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 yeah. That's, you got to bring that one up, though, just because uh, you got to bring that one up. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose that was a bad example. Exactly. You know, like somebody's had a really bad haircut. You know, you can't just be like, your haircut looks right. shit, mate. <laughs> you can't do that. If, that's not cool. You know? If you got a shit stain on your trousers, I think the guy wants to know he's got that, if you know what I mean. You know, if you see anybody with shit stain on their trousers, just back away. Please let's back away. Yeah, back you away. Know? Say, look, there's something on your, on your pants. Back away. Back away. But yeah. <laughs> but where were we? <laughs> we were talking about companion <laughs> plans. Something we about went on a random plans. tangent. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, there's lots you can do. You know, I, I like to grow cacti. I've got some cool cacti. I have a Venus flytrap. You know, trying to just grow some random plants that you enjoy growing. You know, don't limit you it to the, just cannabis. Um, Sorry, Mark. What was the one you just said? The carnivorous one, the uh, Venus flytrap. Venus flytrap. To, Sorry? to keep pests at bay. Do you find that it actually works to keep pests at bay? Oh, no, I don't put it in my uh, grow room or anything like that. And you don't want oh. it to keep pests at bay. You, they're carnivorous so the only food it really gets is from the insects it eats you have to yeah, put it in like a nutrient for soil work? and shit yeah it, 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 yeah, dude, it catches fucking flies and shit man you just go check on it now and again and have a fly in it hmm. yeah they're pretty cool, cool. Mm. i recommend everybody get one of those they're just cool plants man they could yeah. eat your uh, fungus gnats couldn't they yeah but that would be yeah, a bit I small know. for it maybe yeah, in, in I've there. seen a couple of plants online though, and for the life of me, I can't remember what they were called, but they're like other sorts of carnivorous plants that would be good for things like fungus gnats. Mm. I find them so interesting. Yes, yeah, I don't know cool. if anybody in the chats use them to keep bugs like that at bay, but it would be pretty interesting. Those would be interesting companion plants mm. too. Mm. I'd be curious like whether they could live in there because most of those carnivorous plants, the ones I'm aware of, usually live in bog bogs in, in swampy yeah, areas, yeah, which really means. Marshy. They're going to need yeah. a lot of humidity and whatnot, which is really and, not and going to be. Any in nutrients your in the skin. soil can just kill kill them. You, you you really can't feed them anything. I have to get specifically distilled water specifically for that plant because if if it doesn't rain, right. like over the summertime, we had a quite a while with no rain. So I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. And then it went. What a fucking bastard! <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of those. Like, oh, I'm gonna sneeze, and then I press mute, and it's like, oh yeah, don't need to sneeze now. I'm like, yeah, cheers. But God, no. What was I saying? Yeah, any nutrients are all in the medium, so you couldn't plant it with your cannabis plant. You'd have to pull it in a different parts altogether in a nutrient-free right. medium, and only ever feed it distilled water. Don't ever feed it anything. But that they would be cool to have in the grow room as well. And they're just cool plants, man. They're cool mm -hmm. plants. I like the Venus flytrap. And you learn interesting things when you start growing them as well. You learn interesting things about carnivorous plants, which are completely different to normal plants. But it's uh, it's really cool. Very interesting. Yeah, I, I like my Venus flytrap. I haven't checked on it for a while. Winter's coming in, in the UK, and you have to kind of leave them outside as well. Random fucking Venus flytraps here. Yeah, Jesus. You have to leave them outside in the winter because it has to get cold and kind of die off. 
you can't keep it running because they'll, they'll just start growing shit and die anyway. So if you want it to uh, survive, you have to let it kind of die off over the winter, go into the wintering phase, and then come oh. back out in springtime. So I can't bring it indoors and shit. I have to just leave it outside and let it suffer because that's what it's used to. Very cool. Weird. Oh. Yeah, they're cool, man. Get them. Get them. Yeah, they're from outer space. I found it uh, like just walking past the flower shop one day. It was just there, just after a total eclipse of the sun. It was just sitting there. Yeah, total eclipse of the yeah. You know, so be your dentist. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking no. great movie, man. Stay on. No. <laughs> now spit. <laughs> yeah. Imagine, imagine, you know what we're talking about? You sound, you're not getting involved. Singing songs yeah. about Seymour? Come on, Marge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Sing. Great companion plants, everybody. Venus flytraps. They, they won't keep pests away and shit like that. They don't expect them to do that. They don't eat a lot, but they're just cool plants to have. Yeah, just saying. And then cacti as well. Cacti is also cool plants. And fungi are also cool. Not necessarily plants, but... That's cool to have around as well. So don't just limit your growing experience down to just one type of plant, even though cannabis is good to grow. You know, there's a wide range of different things you can grow out there for different purposes. Uh, with these companion plants, you can grow the uh, the basil, so you can use that with foods, but that also serves a purpose in the grow room as well. So if you can find things like that, that not only are grown, but also serve a purpose whilst they're in the grow room, bonus, isn't it? Do it, yeah. man. Do Absolutely it. delicious. Good stuff to have around. Yeah. And, you know, homegrown is always the best, regardless of what it is. Homegrown is always the best. Cannabis, fruits, vegetables, mushrooms. <laughs> Anything. You know, grow them at home, man, and they'll be the best ones you have. So is there anything else we can add here about uh, companion plants? Yeah, we know it's, it's a short episode, out. but, you know, it's not well, a lot um, to it. Notice that some people say about growing, like who said, was it? I think it was Kyle Cushman, wasn't it? Who said the strawberry cough? Yeah, had that strawberry so. flavor because it was grown in, near a strawberry field. Yeah, uh, he said it across. Don't there think was it's a strawberry true, field right? across the street, and that's why it yeah. had strawberry flavor in it. Uh -huh. I don't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> but there. Do you think that there are any plants that can? like kind of pass their flavor over to, a, over to a cannabis plant? I'm not sure about that. I mean, I'll, I'll relate one experience I had with a pepper plant once, but I, and I'm not even sure what happened here, but I, I one year I planted chili peppers next to jalapeno peppers next to bell peppers. And for some reason, the bell peppers got a little spicy and the jalapeno peppers got less spicy. And I think it was from pollination. I don't think it was from the roots. Right. I think it was actually pollination that did that. But I can't be sure. But I mean, I've never experimented with that more. So I think, in my opinion, it's possible for some plants to pass some traits. But I'm not sure if it's done by root exudates or pollen or what. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm very suspicious about a strawberry plant giving a cannabis plant anything like that maybe another cannabis plant could do it better but i'm mm. not sure about a strawberry plant affecting a cannabis plant that way that just doesn't sound right yeah and of course not all plants are good you know some plants you don't want to plant with your cannabis plants like uh, uh like types of ivy you know you don't want it taking over your plants and absorbing all the nutrients out of the fucking soil that's not a good idea you know, you only want to use plants that are going to be beneficial to the cannabis plants in some way. And if they're not going to be beneficial, get the fuck out of grow room. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do something here. I'm trying to create something beautiful. You can't live in there rent free. You know? <laughs> earn your keep. That's right. If you're not doing something, get the fuck out. Right. Uh, and fennel as well. You, you know fennel? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. you, that that is apparently something that you shouldn't plant with your uh, cannabis plant because it will inhibit the growth. Did not know that. I do know that some plants do produce exudates that prevent other plants from growing around it, but I don't know uh, which they are. I just know that they exist. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so you just be careful of that kind of shit. You know, make sure that the plant will do something for the cannabis plant and not just be a hindrance. It won't just take up space and eat up nutrients. It has to be able to serve some purpose and give something back. You know. And fill me bowls once you put poison ivy in there. That would help you not having your cannabis plant stolen. Okay, yeah. that's <laughs> a good like point. A yeah. Maybe. 
We didn't consider that, did we? You know, protection <laughs> plants. Exactly. You know, stinging That's nettles. That's a whole category of companion plants, I think. Yeah. Uh, Audrey, too, would be a good one for that. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, good plant. Good plant. Uh, well, I think that's about it, right? Uh, there's not much more to add here about companion planting. No. But, you know, I would say if, if if you have other better information, please leave it in the comments. Come by by Percy's and let us know. We'd love to pass it on to our listeners. Uh, 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 giant grasses said horsetail plants contain silica. Yes. Okay. Uh, scouring rush. Uh, popweed, horsetails are called many different things, but yeah, they do. If you, uh, it's, it's an ancient plant that grows very much in wetlands around where I live. And you can actually, back in the day, the Native Americans would take take these things and you take handfuls of them and mash them up in your hands and actually make like a scouring pad so you could wow. clean things with it because it has silica embedded into the, into the plant. So it's oh. interesting, very interesting yeah, stuff. Yeah. Cool, man. That's interesting. You can, add, you can add that stuff to your compost, and yes, you'll get silica into your compost. And then as well, if you want to grow some grass on the side, I think you bought something got similar similar to that monkey. Where yeah. people growing grass and then you know it's not grown with the cannabis, but they grow it and then use it as a mulch on top of their cannabis. So the it's not necessarily saw... a companion plant, it's just something you're getting stuff from to feed to your cannabis plant sorry Mark. well the, the one that i saw was actually this person had grown grass seed on the top of his cannabis pot with the intention yeah. of letting it die and turning it into it it, it would then turn itself into a natural mulch basically right. a green mulch and, you know as a lot of times uh, living soil growers will use some kind of a straw mulch or something on top of the soil yeah. to keep the moisture in well in this case he decided to use a natural product basically grass seems cool. to work yeah, Bro's right. still going and it looks good. It's lots to do, yeah. And if anybody is out there, you have certain plants that you use for companion plants, right? then come and show us over at Percy's, you know, to get over to the forum, show off your other plants. We we like growing plants all together, not just cannabis, just mostly cannabis, you know. <laughs> we <laughs> I enjoy grow all kind of stuff. Too. So, I just mostly yeah. post pictures of, of cannabis. That's mostly what I post. But yeah, I grow all kind of stuff. I would love to see what people are into. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I have pictures of my Venus flytrap in the known users section, I think, maybe. I'm not too sure where that is, but there is definitely pictures up there. Oh. Mm -hmm. Very cool, man. So let us know what you're growing, everybody, yeah, not just your cannabis. But uh, we have some listener mail questions. If anybody has any questions for listener mail, don't forget to put Q before it in the chat there, and we'll answer them before we finish up on the show. So, yes, let's do the listener mail. Uh we just have uh, a question from Billy, I think. I know there's a couple of questions for because there's Mook as well. But, uh, we'll go with Billy first. Billy sent in a numerous amount of questions, as he does, but we uh, only one was really <laughs> YouTube friendly. So, <laughs> we, like the way you put that. we just bought one over. Uh, and Billy asks, how many plants is too many for one person to attend and keep them all healthy, uh, personal or job? Yeah, it's a good question. Eh? At what point does it go from being just one person looking after their garden to it becoming a commercial enterprise and you need to start hiring staff? What do you think, Monkey? I don't know, man. I could easily grow a few dozen myself, but I don't want to. Um, I guess the the biggest question and my the biggest way I would answer that question is when does it become when does it stop becoming a personal grow and and you're actually trying to make money with it? in my opinion there is if anytime you're growing more than you can use yeah you you yeah. you you push that rule a little bit too far uh -huh. you know one of those things and we all end up with surplus now and again I'm not talking about ending up with a jar or two here or there I'm just talking about when you're producing literally twice as much as you need um, at that point, it becomes like, okay, are, are you a business or are you a personal grower? It's when you start selling it, man. You know, if, if you're producing more than you consume, then just save it up, make hash out of it, make extracts out of it, share it with somebody yeah. who hasn't, who needs. Yeah, yeah. You know? Maybe a medical user who is not capable of growing their own. That's you know, what, lots of I would love to, to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. If, if it was legal here and I had people, uh, people that mm -hmm. were in need, I would definitely do that. Yeah. How many plants do you think you could grow, Marge, before it started becoming too much for you? 
<laughs> uh, right now, yeah, not a lot, <laughs> but right. I mean, I've grown a couple dozen at a time, but that was more like a two person job. I, you know, I wasn't yeah. really doing it myself. A lot of it really depends on how much other stuff you have going on. Like if you're doing it personally, you're growing your own. I mean, do you have kids in the house? Do you have animals to look after? Do you have a full-time right. job? Like all these things yeah. are going to impact how much time you have to devote to your grow. So mm -hmm. it really, as always, it depends. <laughs> I mean, legally I can grow yeah. four here in Canada. And I, th I find that number pretty easy to manage for what I have going on in my life right now. But Mm -hmm. some people might find that too much it might also depend on the size of the plants i've been growing more micros lately which fits into you know, someone's lifestyle a lot easier than you know four monster plants so again it depends yeah and it depends on the setup as well if you're growing indoors then it's going to take more work isn't it? but you could right. yeah, like, plant a field of cannabis and just let it do its thing you know keep a, an eye on it a couple of hundred plants maybe you know, i think one person could look after a couple of hundred plants right yeah, uh, you're gonna be full time on a couple hundred plants, man. Yeah, yeah, that's so that, a lot. <laughs> the training, the pruning, the you know, and then come the harvest. My God, trim oh, is God. gonna be outrageous. Oh yeah, fuck yeah, that's a different story. Shit. Yeah, I'm sticking with four plants. Yeah, what, what, yeah. come to harvest time. Yeah, I ain't trimming fucking two hundred plants. That's crazy talk, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think the the, the biggest yeah, I've oh gotten God, is trim jail. Yeah, oh, the biggest yeah. I've gotten is six six full size plants at one time. I mean, I threw micros in it, but micros are nothing. But at six full size plants, that's more cannabis than I can consume. Yeah, you know, the misses and I are the only only people that are consuming. That's a lot of cannabis for two people. I, yeah. I understand that there are people out there that, that will tell me, yeah, I could consume that. That's fine, great for you. Too much for me. Yeah, that's it. I think uh, a good amount is eight. Eight's great, you know, on a cycle of uh, four four. Four mm -hmm. plants in one tent, four plants in another, and you just get like harvesting every two months, and that that usually seems to be enough. Uh, it seems to be enough for well, how I used to grow anyway. I don't need that many nowadays because my missus just smokes mostly. I don't smoke too much, so we only have four plants, and that's enough. And so you just have to figure out what's good for you, or you know, it's different for each person. Yeah, it's a good question though. Good question. At what point does it, do you need to start, you know, being like, I'm growing too many fucking plants here. And not because of legality or anything like that, just because you're not capable of growing it. You're not, you're not capable of monitoring the garden properly. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, I got to that point uh, after my, my winter grow last year. It's like I looked at my cabinet and basically I was maxed out thinking like, okay, maybe I could do seeds for, for a run now. And, and that's what I would recommend to people. If you end up saturated with too much cannabis, maybe you can switch gears for a, for a, a month or two, take a break. Uh -huh. That's yeah. a good thing too. You know, take a break. You can always do that. You know, and some people do that, you know, they'll uh, grow a shitload over winter time when the mm -hmm. heat isn't excessive and then not grow anything all over the summer months. Or some people just grow outdoors in the summertime and that lasts yeah. them all year. So, yeah, I mean, it's possible to do it that way, too. So you don't have to constantly just be plugging at it. Yeah. Grow what you need, not what you not what you think you can. Grow what you need. That's right, man. Well, grow a little bit more than what you need. <laughs> well, that, just in you case always one of the need a little bit on. extra. Yeah, yeah, you always need a little bit more than you think you do is the way that comes out. You know? Uh-huh. Right, yeah, yeah. Millennium people that come to Percy's and say, well, I only smoke an ounce a month. I said, well, after you start growing your own, you'll smoke an ounce and a half to two ounces a month. Yeah, maybe an ounce a week, you know? <laughs> uh, well, it happens too. Not to me, but yeah. Yeah, so good question. Let us know what everybody thinks in the chat. How much is too much for you? Uh, at what point is it you're growing too much and you don't want to do it anymore? Yeah. Good question. Well, we have one from Mook from uh, Australia. He asks, Aloha from Australia. I uh, don't think it works like that. Right? It's from Hawaii. Uh, outdoor season is here. Oh, yeah. Lucky bastards. They're going into summertime now, aren't they? Mm, they are. Mm. Uh, uh, I raised the girls indoors under 18.6, and when big enough, they spend the season outdoors. The transition is the hardest. Too early, and they freak and can flip. Too late, and they lose size. So... How to use the daylight calculator to work out when the transit when to transition indoor teenage plants to the outdoor season in your area. How much daylight do you need? Uh, Thirteen and a half hours, fourteen hours, etc. Cheers. So yeah, just talking about uh, 
Yeah, hardened enough it's called, isn't it? Is that the right word? Calm down, Billy. Uh, it could be part of <laughs> part of the word, yeah. Basically just getting them in, in acclimated to outdoor condition would be harding them harden off. Yeah. So you know, you just start off with like an hour outside and then a couple of hours, then uh, five but, hours. I think his question would I think his question is at what point does he put them outside? How much daylight does he does he use? You know, do you put it out oh, right, at right. twelve twelve or do you put it out at you know at, at uh, twelve and a half hours, thirteen, thirteen and a half, fourteen hours of daylight? When right, when right. would you take them out of an eighteen eighteen six tent and stick them outside without freaking them out and making them herm yeah. or bloom mm. or something like that? Yeah, it would depend on how indica sativa. So I would say definitely more than fourteen hours. I wouldn't risk it any more than that. And you can also you know, supplement the light if you needed to. So if you want to put it outside, but you're still only getting 12 hours of light, then you can add a light to go off for a couple of hours while it's outdoors there as well. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Light it, depth, it, that's an option. And the thing is, you know, if you're using a, a supplementary light to prevent it from blooming, you don't have to have that light uh, at full, you know, intensity. It just has to be on enough to prevent the light from going to sleep. Uh -huh. I've seen this done in many greenhouses out in the Pacific Northwest. And when they're adding supplemental lights to prevent plants from going into flower, these lights are not, at, I mean, they're not 700 par in there. They might be two, 300 par in there. It's just to prevent the plant from sleeping at that right. point in time. So, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I see what you mean. Is there anything stronger than a full moon will stop the plant from sleeping, essentially? Got it. So uh, you, don't, kinda... you don't need a beast of a light out there. No, you need you basically need something that's just going to keep the plant a little bit a little bit happy for a while. One of those things like that. But nice. I, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I was, but I was on the same track as you. I'm thinking like if it was my plant, I'd probably wait till you have close to 14 hours of, of daylight before I would you know, mm -hmm. take a chance on it. But then, like you said, you know, too late, and you and you may lose some size on it. But I don't know. That's that's what I would do. What's it take? Like uh, four weeks for it to reveg? Another two weeks. So even if it does start to flower when it goes out there, it's got enough time over the next couple of months to, you know, uh, revert back to the veg stage and then start to flower again, right? So yeah, it could do that, and it does happen sometimes. But you know, when a reveg, they usually say a uh, uh, rule of thumb that I've heard is, uh, it's going to take as long as it's been in flower to to flip it back out of flower is, is a good right. way to put it. So if it's Oof. been, you know, if, if it if it if it tries to go back and start flowering for three four weeks, and then you're gonna it's gonna take the same amount of time to flip back around and go back into veg, so it can freak them out. So there's really no rule there, and a lot of that depends on genetics. But that you know that's the worst case scenario. It's a nice Pretty way much. to do things, though. You know, to grow, uh, grow it indoors on the eighteen six over the winter time. He doesn't mention there how long it has been growing indoors. That's no, going to be, a, you know, when you've got it started like that indoors and then plant it outdoors when the season's right, they turn into monster plants, man. Crazy yep. huge plants. Have a nice thorn in his hands very soon. Uh, turn into trees. Yeah, yeah, it's like how many plants is too many? One. That's what Moot's going to be saying. <laughs> right. You know, six yeah. months from now, he's like, I can't do it, lads. <laughs> you know, be looking like these guys from the Mendo Dope Boys standing on a ladder looking at the top of the plant. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beasts, man. Yeah. It started in August. Damn, sir. That's going to be a, wow. that's gonna be an impressive plant. I hope you got a diary over at Percy's, bro. I want to see this. Come and share that with us over at Percy's. So that's gonna pictures. be a, a yeah. That's gonna be a monster plant. If it picks, so it yeah. didn't happen, bro. Yeah, <laughs> that's the rule. That's the rule. Yeah. Let's see. That's gonna be cool. Yeah, uh, Chilbert says it depends on uninterrupted darkness. Yeah, that's what triggers the uh, because the, there's that lamplight method as well. I can't remember. Is that what it's called? The lamplight uh, method. I can't remember exactly how it works. But you, instead of doing eighteen, uh, yeah, gaslight. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, instead of going eighteen six, it's like so many hours on, followed by so many out, well, by so much off. But it's like multiple switches a day that you have to pull off, and yeah. it's some crazy equation numbers in there. So yeah, it's not not simple to do, but it can be done. Yeah, gaslighting. Yeah, and some strains can live fine under it, and others will just flower regardless. So just be careful with that. Yeah, don't ask us to do a grow guide on that because none of us here have ever done it and we don't recommend it. Yeah, and it would only be a, a worth a question anyway, you know. It's, uh, it wouldn't last very long. You know, it's uh, better just coming out of the question of the gaslight thing. But 
yeah it's one of the old school things that people used to do with the hps just to try and reduce the energy bills i think because it costs so much to fucking run them lights yeah it was trying to get the plant to, to flip the flower quicker so you could use less energy kind of thing like that yeah. it's a weird way to freak a plant out uh gas lantern tech that's the one sure but i knew lantern was in there somewhere gas lantern tech okay yeah, gas it. lantern tech yeah that sounds better than gaslight honestly yeah yeah <laughs> i think it's basically doing the same thing you're trying to convince the plant to do something and ain't right <laughs> yeah you put gaslight in the plant, and it like, no, we did give you light. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, <laughs> it's time to bloom. We told you it's about. time. Go for it. You know, look, you, look, the light's been on for the last three hours. What are you talking about? That's exactly <laughs> it. Yeah, I can't remember convinced. exactly how it goes. Is it like uh, six hours on, and then two hours off with 15 minutes on, and then no, two I, hours off? It, it's just something know. crazy like that. It just uh, It's all mixed up all over the place, but you can reduce your energy bills by half or something. I wouldn't say it's worth the risk. Because some plants, I think it's sativas, will flower easier than indicas, or vice versa. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, yeah, just scratch that. It could be either way. It's not a technique we'd recommend, really. We won't recommend it. You said earlier, well, don't recommend it, monkey. Uh, anything else, then? I think that's it. Is there any cues in the chat? Let's have a quick look um, here. Trying to see. Don't see anything. No, no, it's all good. I think we're all good then. So we can move to the outro and wrap this shit up and I can go and get some more medicine. It's gone down. <laughs> you do sound a little worse now that you've been talking for a couple of hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mission. You can hear it a bit, but... Yeah, my, my nose is all stuffy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's really dry. dry. Like a month ago or so, and uh, it's, yeah, it sucks. It's not fun. Yeah. He needs a nice, strong edible and a good night's sleep, Marge. It's a whiskey. Right. I want out of whiskey, man. The people bought whiskey up a couple of times. Hot chat, body. Man. That's what you need. Yeah, you know, no, not doing chop edible. Well, I guess that is edible. A hot toddy. That's an yeah, definitely an infused hot toddy. Is that an Instagram model? What? No? <laughs> <laughs> a hot toddy. Yeah, is that that is that like a Gen Z slang for Instagram model? <laughs> good looking babe, a hot toddy. Yeah. I don't know. It is, surely, surely it is, right? It sounds no, like I don't it. think so, no. All right, all right. Okay, Le learned this new slang term the other day called Riz. You know what Riz okay. is? Yeah, just these new, these new words that appear out of nowhere. And it's like, has this always been a word? Have we always had this? Is this the simulation Riz? being updated and left me out again? What the fuck is this? The Riz, it pretty much means sex appeal. You know, somebody has Riz. Some of that Gen Z thing. Yeah, yeah. It's bad, isn't it? It's bad. Kids yeah. today. You know? <laughs> when I was a day, you said slang the way you said slang. Not like you, you know? do today, kids. <laughs> That's right. Fuck, I don't want to become that person. Back in my day. Back in my day, I didn't have internet to look shit up. That's you right. Know, we, we, we used just to have to go guessed. to the library. Or we, we just, lied about it. That's you know, we do. Right. we do. We just got the wrong sense. answer and believed it for six months. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. good times good times yeah so uh let's do let's do that let's go to the outro and wrap this shit up thanks for the questions there everybody good times let's do outro is the outro true playing i believe it is okay. professional fading professionally pro outro we'll get it right eventually sometimes sometimes it goes well Put that NyQuil in your bong. Damn. Uh, <laughs> oh, a NyQuil bong. <laughs> you know, damn. Oh, shit. <laughs> nah. You put some nice infused oil in that NyQuil. That'll get you. Yeah. Yeah, it's still shit to do before bedtime, though. Got, got things to do. So I'll get, get a little bit <laughs> medicated and then go finish off the chores. Yeah. The know. chores. You ruined it, Mackie. <laughs> How did it ruin it? By like, just speaking in general? You know? <laughs> it, it was so professional. It was so professional. We'll keep trying. Come back next week and see if we can put off a professional intro then. You know, just keep trying, everybody. We'll get there eventually. Uh, yeah, good week for mushroom picking it in the south and west, by the way. Yes. It's that time of year, everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for joining us as always. We appreciate you being here on the Sundays and joining the show with us. I hope this show has been useful. You know, uh, we don't know much about companion planting, but I hope 
you learned enough from what we do know and of course thanks for the questions as well if you got any suggestions for episodes of grow guides which you'd like us to cover in the future then let us know that as well you know we're always happy to hear from you guys your input is important and this is how we know what subjects to cover so let us know what you think you know what else should we do for the grow guides this is episode 90 so we've got 10 more to do to get to that 100 uh, what's next creating a cannabis garden with raised beds is next week so join us for that we're going to do a raised beds grow which is going to be very fucking cool i like raised beds one day well we have to do that but i think that's it then are we ready to go everybody yes yes we are i think so, I think so. it's been fun yeah march might have an announcement next week but yeah we'll see what happens in the next couple of days right march that's right that's right yeah <laughs> right so we'll keep you uh keep we'll see you on the next one thanks as always everybody see you then right, let's wave everybody let's wave Bye. 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 sound like death now just fucking slowly dying here Bye, everybody. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Thank you.